All right, so earlier last month, we got a new Marvel show, Secret Invasion. That marks the ninth Marvel show on Disney+. Plus. That means today I am going to go ahead and rank all nine Marvel, MCU, Disney Plus original shows. Before I do that, please make sure to subscribe, like button, hit the bell, and comment down below. What is your guys' ranking of all of the shows? What did you think of my ranking? I know I'm going to have a controversial one in last place. Controversial one's really high. I just really want to know what you guys thought of my ranking. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started with number nine, which to me, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. If you've watched my review on the show, I know you think know it's pretty obvious. It's got to be Miss Marvel. This show is abysmal. I mean, it's actually really bad. It starts off charming enough to where I like the characters. I like their chemistry with each other. I laughed at a couple of the jokes. It starts off like a charming enough Disney Plus show. Then it turns into a terribly written globetrotting adventure to where she leaves to go globetrotting for a mission we don't even care about. And then the villains are just stupid. But at the end, the way that this is resolved is that the villain is like, oh, I'm going to have a sudden change of heart for no reason. Kills herself to like, stop the big bad guy from entering the world or whatever. I don't even remember. And then Miss Marvel's like, no. Oh, wait. Yeah. Okay. They're dead. Let's go grab some pizza. That's pretty much how that ends. We still had a whole another episode to go to where it takes a completely different plot line and kind of takes the first two episodes and kind of fixes it a little bit. That last episode is pretty charming. But just like some of the decisions along the way. Miss Marvel is a comic book that I absolutely love. I loved the original run of Miss Marvel. And so I was so excited for the show. And then the show came out and I watched every episode of it. And every week I was dreading watching it because the story made no sense. The writing was garbage. It was just like, this was the lowest time for the MCU for me. Because Thor Love and Thunder and Miss Marvel came out. I did a dual review on that. Terrible. It was absolutely abysmal. I just... I did not like this show at all. I think that it definitely was a disappointment. It should have been so much better. I mean, why make a Miss Marvel show if you're just going to make it a globetrotting adventure with villains with superpowers? I mean, you don't even have Miss Marvel's real powers. Like, Iman Vilvani was amazing, but she just needed a better source material. And that's why I'm excited for the Marvels, because she's going to have a better source material with Captain Marvel and... Idiot, I forgot her name. But I'm so excited for that movie because Iman Vavani will have better content to make instead of just a show that was clearly just made for content on Disney+. Plus. It enrages me that this was what this Miss Marvel show was. And I just, I'm just so upset that that's what we got instead of a good Miss Marvel show. Eighth place, though, we do have She-Hulk. And this was a show for me that... It's weird because in one way I kind of enjoyed quite a bit of it. I was wa watching the show and I kind of was enjoying myself through a lot of it. I liked some of the jokes and this was like the first half of the show. But then the second half of the show just was very clearly cranking out content. The crank out content like we were just getting episodes and episodes and episodes where it served no cause. And so it got kind of boring. And then we got to the finale and all of the plot lines were about to wrap up really good. I was like... This show might end up being a pretty good show. I might actually like this show and give it a positive score in the end. And then, nope, Miss Marvel, not Miss Marvel, She-Hulk's like, this is my show. I'm going to jump out of the whole MCU, go talk to a robot Kevin Feige, and make the most probably unique but also really lazy way to end my show. Instead of having a big fight that resolves all the constant plot lines that it was thrown at us that could have wrapped it up pretty nicely in a nice little bow we got this this show where she jumps out of the mcu breaks all canon and basically just goes yeah i'm a woman so i can do what i want if you know me you know i don't like barbie for that and i definitely did not like this ending i mean i was more mixed on it at first but then i was like come on man this is what we're doing i mean you got nine semi-good episodes that were enjoyable enough and then you just jump out of the MCU and mess it all up. It's like, it, I don't. I know they were trying to be unique, but it felt just lazy to me. And honestly felt like a lazy way of doing this. 
And so the episodes weren't even that good. Like there was moments in the episodes that I laughed, but it was like a show where I never really wanted to go back to it. I never was really dying to go watch the next She-Hulk episode. And so it's a good, it's a good enough. Sometimes it's got its moments to be good, but overall, I mean, this show was like, I, I didn't care much for it and they're making a season two. So, I mean, we all know how that's going to go very excited not not at all i i don't really know what marvel's doing making a season two to this but it, it had its moments but it's definitely definitely not great seventh place we got what if the animated show i haven't even seen all the episodes to this because this is a show to where like a couple episodes that intrigued me but then again it's not really a show I wanted to keep going back to every week that i wanted to watch the next episode every week it's really just a show that had some unique episodes and executed it in a way that it could get it done in half an hour and it was it was fun to watch i remember at like lunch i would just sit down and watch an episode of this because you know when i was eating lunch and it was it was it was pretty fun that's all it was was just a pretty fun show it's really nothing special it's just like a show that has its moments and can be entertaining sometimes like i i never watched all the rest of the episodes uh i've seen the zombie one multiple times that episode's awesome the tony stark and killmonger one that one was pretty cool but just like it's a lot of the ideas were really cool but it's a show that never really drew me back in and like kept making me want oh i wonder what's gonna happen next week like i never really cared because it's like a what if MCU show that like the execution of each episodes was really weird like it was a half hour format so it would go over stuff that would last an entire movie but felt like it was missing some scenes because it's just a half hour what if and so I just I enjoyed some of them it's just not really my kind of show I know it's a lot of yours not really mine I do plan on watching the entire first season before what if season two comes out but, I mean, it's not really necessarily my kind of thing. I'd much rather watch anything else that the MCU puts out than watch this again. Next up, and this is going to be another controversial one, in sixth place we got WandaVision. And this is a show that I love so much of it. I mean, the, when it first came out, we haven't had a MCU thing in years. The MCU was my favorite franchise from then on. And I was just so excited for the show. And each week, me and my family would sit down and it would be half hour tidbit to where we get a little bit of information, but you don't get a lot. And so you'd go on the internet and you'd watch theory videos and you'd articulate your own theories as your own and you'd talk with your friends about the show. This was quite an experience. This is what I think MCU shows should go back to. This is what I think Secret Invasion should have done. But I was just invested in this entire show until the end to where it did the She-Hulk kind of thing where it definitely did not need to be nine episodes. Let's see that there was being episodes that we could have just got to the ending and found out what's actually going on. There's just being episodes to make it nine episodes. Like I can definitely think of like three or four episodes that they could have just erased, made it six episodes only. But uh, they didn't, they made it nine episodes. And so like, I definitely got bored to a bit of the end of the season. And then the ending was just like a big CGI battle between a bunch of big CGI guys and they just throwing CGI fireballs at each other. It's not the most entertaining way, but just look at the experience of this. I mean, you don't get this with any Disney Plus shows. I really wish Secret Invasion and Ahsoka would start doing this, articulate theories, because this was so fun to be able to walk away from a show each week and just watch theory videos and articulate your own theories. And as a show as a whole, the very beginning in the middle of it was pretty dang good. I mean, it's got all the intrigue, the mysteries, it's got horror elements that really work. And I really love what the show does to set up Wanda's arc throughout the rest of the, her history in the MCU. I mean, I this might be an unpopular opinion, but I loved her arc in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness and that would have, wouldn't have happened without this show. I think that this show does a lot right, and it's so good that how they made the MCU shows start like this at first, and then like it's definitely like I said, it's not perfect. It definitely kind of got a little boring towards the end. Could have shaved off a couple episodes, got it over quicker, found the answers out quicker. But dang, when it's good, it's real good, and it was quite an experience back in 2021, January of 2021, watching this show, talking with friends, articulating your theories. 
It was awesome. I loved it. Fifth place, I gotta go with Moon Knight. And this is a show for me that is unique because the first two episodes, absolutely love. The last two episodes, absolutely love. But man, was I bored to death in the middle of those episodes. Starting with the positives, I mean, the, oh my gosh, Oscar Isaac is phenomenal in this. He is absolutely great in this role playing two characters he's got great chemistry with himself which is absolutely great and when he needs to pull off those emotional moments at the end he really does pull off those emotional moments and with his characters and has them be absolutely unique and funny and charming and the action is great it's actually really brutal it the show promised horror elements and i don't really feel any horror elements to this but the action how brutal the action would be here is absolutely great. The int the villain, I think, does a really great job. The intrigue at the end to know who this third brother is, I think, is absolutely great. And even, like, the CGI battle in the end was actually just really cool because the action is really well done. This is an intense show filled with so many emotions. The end of the show genuinely made me cry. That was actually really sad and really pulls off what they had to do to make it like that. I really, really, really did love this show. Well, then we get the middle two episodes, and the middle two episodes are just him and this girl rolling through the pyramids, not really knowing what to do, and then they get to the resolving point to where I'm like, it's gonna be two more episodes of this? What? And, and the middle was just so boring to where I watched it with my family, and I was just completely out of it for the middle two episodes. I was bored. I didn't think that they worked whatsoever. And then the fifth episode, we drew back with the big emotions and really did work and really did pull me back in. So, two-thirds, fantastic MCU show. This is exactly what I wanted from the show. In the middle, two kind of just made me bored. That's why it's not higher on this list. But dang, those when it's good, it's a great another MCU show. Fourth place, the new one, Secret Invasion. Now, all throughout this entire show, I think it's absolutely great. I mean, you, you don't know who to trust, so there's very intense sequences to where you are just on the edge of your seat, invested in this, very excited to see where the show goes. And then the cast is actually really phenomenally good to where you get Samuel Jackson, um, Rhodey in this. I mean, it's a show to where you don't need to have action to build suspense. And when there is action, it's absolutely great. I was on the edge of my seat throughout the whole show. This is a show that I feel like should have been the next WandaVision. People going online and talking about it, speculating what's going to happen next. The scroll villain is absolutely great. I think he does a phenomenal job in here. Kingsley been a deer. I, he's, I'm growing to love him. The action when it is there, like I said, is absolutely great. It's intense. It's fun. It's got moments where it proves that the MCU doesn't need to be just action. It does a new spin on things to where I love the show. All the way up until the last episode to where it's just like, oh, we're going to inject ourselves with a serum. We're now the Super Skrulls. And I was honestly getting real hype. And then she grows a Drax arm that looks like absolute garbage. And then see big CGI battle that looks like absolute garbage. And made me walk away from this. Even though they set up a season two really well. Set up so many things really well that I think really did work. How Nick Fury's character arc throughout the season was evolved. I think did absolutely great. But I mean that CGI battle man. I mean I can't get behind that they would just waste all the upcoming potential of this on characters just flying around on obvious green screens with obvious terrible special effects that I could probably make look better in Adobe Premiere and just looked absolutely I just I couldn't get into it I did not enjoy that aspect of this episode and the season whatsoever and it sucks because there's so many great things on the last episode this was so close to being like an A show being top three MCU then we made that episode and kind of threw down the hill. It's better than Moon Knight, though, because it only had one meh episode. But I did love so many things about the show, and I really hope that the MCU sticks this kind of show because I really love talking about it each week. I thought it was great. Kicking off our top three, I'm going to go ahead and give it to Hawkeye. I absolutely loved so many things about the show. The Christmas setting, the action, the vibes that they have here. The chemistry between our two leads is absolutely stunningly good to where they have excellent chemistry throughout this whole thing to where it's funny, it's charming. It wraps up some plot lines that we were getting from Black Widow 
that I think wrapped up pretty well. And it's a great way to bring Daredevil in here. Vincent D'Onofrio was back in here as Kingspin, and I think he did absolutely great in the role here, and absolutely fit perfectly in here, to where throughout this whole show, this was during my time when I wanted to quit my YouTube channel, I wanted to quit watching movies, I was bored of them, and the show kind of just brought me back to doing this, and now look at me, I make regular videos on a regular daily basis, okay, that part's kind of a lie, but I have grown... 50 plus subscribers since then thank you guys so much and just this show kind of brought me back to life on my channel and I can thank it for that but there's so many great things about the show that it was entertaining it's a Marvel show that wasn't just a great show because it was done really well it's a great show because it's entertaining and just done very in a much fun way towards just a fun Christmas show to watch I don't really have any problems with it. I think that this is a great show. These top three MCU shows are absolutely great. Hawkeye does it very well. It's also the one show that I do feel like wasn't as good, wasn't didn't pull me back in as much as the other ones did. But oh my gosh, Hawkeye was just such a fun show. Then we got in second place. I'm going to go ahead and give it to ba -da -da -da, Loki. Yeah, you know what my number one is. I absolutely love Falcon the Winter Soldier. But Loki is a show that when I left it, I loved it. And then a couple weeks passed and I kind of forgot a lot about it. So like a couple weeks ago, I actually did rewatch the show. It's still really good. It is really freaking good. This show is actually has some of the best things that the MCU ever has. Because it's intriguing. It has a mystery as emotions. It has great action. It has everything you want from a Marvel show and this Loki show to where Loki was not supposed to be good again. He's supposed to be the bad Loki. But then instantly you get these emotions in the first episode. And then throughout the rest of the show, you just get him and Sylvie and the timeline. And it sets up the whole universe to where it's intense and it's fun and it's memorable and it's awesome and it has great action set pieces and great story arcs and the cast has great chemistry to where this is just the mcu's tv at its finest to where it's a show that's worth talking about worth having a season two it's here just solely because not only to set up the rest of the mcu but to set up more character arcs in season two i'm beyond excited for season two i think that this loki tv show, show was great overdone every single expectation i had for it it's actually one of the best MCU shows, but I mean, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is real biased for me. It's that's why it's gonna be in first place. This show I think was awesome. I think that the number one, the action was great. The emotions one there was was great. I know a lot of people were like, "This is just basically a show we're promoting not to be racist." Kind of, but like that's the message that we really need is that black people and experiments and terrible stuff that happened in the past. All that was really great, and when the emotions were brought into that, it's great. And the big thing that elevates this show above the rest is I absolutely loved U.S. Agent in this role. I think U.S. Agent and John Walker was absolutely great, and I absolutely love this actor and how he was able to portray this character. It's intense. When he kills that guy, it's sad because you feel him because he just lost his friend, but you also feel the entire world fear of Captain America being a killer. And then the way that the next episode just starts up is they the Falcon and Winter Soldier attack him, get the shield, and he gets his character arc. That's a great character arc. The villain, I think, here has a great idea, like proving that Thanos could be right, proving how it impacted human beings was, I think, was absolutely great experiment experimentation. The two leads here, absolutely great. Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan hit it off. They're funny, they're charming, they're awesome. There's just so many things about this show that I absolutely love that each week I would watch the episode three or four times because I just absolutely loved it, absolutely loved the action. I'm not very much into the Captain America movies or some of my, my not favorite MCU stuff, but this one, I mean, it proves that Captain America movies could be good, and I'm very excited to see what the Captain America 4 will be with Anthony Mackie because this is my favorite MCU show. Thank you guys for clicking on this one. I got a, a couple more videos coming up. My next video will be a Gran Turismo review. Maybe Spider-Man Lotus if I manage to watch it. I'm not sure yet. And then I'll also have just a bunch more videos coming up. An August movie ranking, a September movie reviews because Saw X is coming out, and a whole bunch of other things are coming out. But thank you guys for clicking on this video. And with that said, subscribe, join the Nerd Army. Peace out.